on this episode of Carnage. We've got 46 days to get this ute ready for Motorex, but that's not the full story. So 46 days sounds like a lot of days, you know, we want to get this car to Matarex, VPW would like to see it there, they'd like to have it on their stand, we'd like to have it there and at least complete if not running. So 46 days sounds like a lot of days, except when you take away the weekends, it takes it down to 34 days. If you actually take it down to filming days, because we don't film every day of the week, you know, because of budgets and all sorts of stuff, it takes us down to 21 days, that's right. 21 days is not a lot. So, yeah. Obviously we're gonna be fitting parts off camera. It's gonna to have to happen that way. You're not gonna see it all because yeah, we're gonna be just busting our asses to get this thing ready for MotorX. So, you're not gonna be seeing videos where it's like, oh, this video is the wiring. This video is the plumbing. This video is building an engine. No, we're just gonna be bolting parts to this car until it runs. Yeah, so let's get started. So you're probably wondering what first. Well, we initially were going to use that fabricated alloy sump, except there was going to be some oil filter location issues and that sort of thing. But the guys at VPW said, well, we've actually got a cast RTS sump that puts the oil filter up the front. Do you want to try one of them? And we said, yeah, why not? So what we have to do is pull the gearbox out, pull that engine out, sit the cast sump onto this engine, put it back in the car, and make sure that's going to fit um, because if it's not going to fit we need to know now so let's do that going up Matt's looking at me like never do that again my eyes the goggles do nothing <sighs> Let's not drop the $10,000 transmission. Just looking into the heads down here and I can see these are obviously the heads that we had on our original 5.7 because the rockers are all got trunnion upgrade. It's got pack springs and retainers in it, so we spent some money there. Of course, the best way to lift your LS is using one of these lift plates from ProFlow and VPW. Spread the load over the bolt holes.
So the plan was to use this nice billet aluminium fabricated pan. Uh, the only problem being that the oil filter part sits right above the uh, steering rack. Now we can get around that by undoing that and that, pulling that down, putting an adapter on there, running some right angle lines off there, running a remote filter. That is totally possible, we can do that. Uh, but we're going to try to see if the RTS cast pan will fit instead, which will save us a lot of drama and holds just as much oil. So let's go grab that, see if that sits in place and see if it fits perfectly. If it does, then we'll go with that. Okay, let's have a look. Oh. Well, we got bolts, pick up. We don't need that right this second because it's not going on this engine permanently. So you can see there, takes the oil galleries just the same, but then uses these transfer tubes that transfer it up the front here where a filter just screw, screws on there. So much simpler and uh, hopefully this will do the trick for us. So we've got that bolted on, so let's uh, see if it fits. I'm sure it will, but you always got to check. Right, see how that goes. Well, that seems to fit perfectly. Plenty of clearance. Um, I might bolt the transmission back up behind it again, just to double check, but uh, yep, that's looking pretty good. I think we're going with that one. Uh, welcome back to the Carnage Workshop. I've got to say, Play comfort is very low today with the humidity up around the 90% and I'm sweating my ring out. Oh man, so humid. Right, so starter motor is bolted in place, but what, what, <laughs> what isn't bolted in place is the steering rack. And this is always a problem with these conversions. And I gotta work out if it's going to work or if we have to relocate the rack slightly which i suspect we will have to do so the other alternative and people will be screaming at me saying scotty do a starter conversion in like you mount the starter on the other side which is all well and good except they don't work with the dart block i'm not sure why but it says specifically it does not work with dart block. So, I mean, it'd be great to relocate the start of the other side of it, the engine, but um, I'm not sure that's going to work for us. So we have two issues at the moment. Uh, one is the starter hits the steering rack in its current position, um, so we may have to just jiggle the steering rack over a bit. That's not the big issue at the moment. It's an issue, but it's not a massive issue. The other is our new cast sump actually hits against the steering rack uh, when it goes up to its full height. So we may have to do a little scallop into that. Some may say, why not use the sump that you know fits? Sure, it fits, but it requires us to do lines and you know remote filters and all that sort of stuff which it's its own sort of pain in the butt. Um, we're sort of running out of room in where to put things, you know, with turbos and scavenge pumps and all that sort of thing and exhaust pipes. So 
if we can use this sump and you know have the filter there and keep that simple that's great if it just means we have to just put a little 15 minute mil scallop in that um, alloy pan then so be it you know it's not a massive deal um, we will pull it out have a look make sure it's not going to interfere with anything inside the pan but uh, I think that might be our option right now but of course yes I'm going to pull it all out again feels like the Lexan all over again pulling things in out so we'll pull it out have a look inside the pan make sure that's going to work if it isn't then we do have to go back to plan A and uh, yeah here we go again I'm going to be good at this by the end. It goes up, it goes down, it goes in, it goes out. Here we go again. So now that we've got the engine out for a little bit, I think it's time we uh, do a bit of a tidy up on the engine bay. Uh, we'll undo some of our bracketry and that sort of thing, and uh, we've got to find out what purple this is. I suspect it's whatever the VY Commodore purple is. I've got to look that up. It might be Cosmo. I'll find out. Um, so if we can get a, a nice big rattle can of that stuff, I can do some prep in here, just make everything purple instead of purple with red highlights um, yeah we'll do that but it means a trip down to the paint shop and that's gonna have to happen tomorrow so we'll join you then so this morning I've been uh, busy hunting up some stuff, went down to the paint shop, took the fuel cap down so they could scan that and then they gave me a couple cans of that and I've already sprayed the engine bay. It's looking much better than it was. Um, I haven't clear coated over it yet but uh, yeah, looks better than it did and you can tell that uh, whatever paint they used to paint the engine bay before wasn't the same colour as the rest of the car, it was much brighter. So you can still see evidence of it down in the tunnel there of uh, whatever they used before. But yeah, make it nice and, well, just nicer. So that way when the engine goes in next, it will actually look like a real car. So while things are drying back there, I'm just going to pop this sump off and see if uh, we've got enough room to work with the modifications we need to make. Oh, that's not looking good. Mm. Looks like we might have to go back to plan A. Because we need to come up around 15 mil into this sump. And those tubes, while we could probably remake the tubes, it's starting to get to that point where we have a sump that will bolt in. And um, yeah. We just might have to go with that and make up some oil lines. <sighs> There's always something, isn't there? So you probably noticed we only have one headlight and that's because whoever had the ute before us had snapped the tab off the original headlight and the blinker was jammed in there with a piece of wood and some hot glue. So I've just been down the wreckers and they're all the same. They're all being broken off tabs and stuff like that. So I end up finding a, uh, a VS Statesman to pull this one out of and it looks like it, it'll be right. Pretty sure they're the same, same. Anyway, 
I'm going to slide that back into there. Um, I've taken the bumper support off. I'm going to give that a coat in purple as well and put new bumper clips on it because the clips were broken. I've also sprayed the engine bay in some clear coat, which has really brought the, uh, the purple up. So the engine bay is looking better than ever. And um, yeah, quite happy with that. So after I do all those things, I've got to also design some uh, little bracketry for our steering rack because we're going to modify that. But uh, yeah, things are coming along. It hasn't been as all as fast as I'd like because every obstacle is a hurdle that slows you down. So you've got to solve that problem and move on to the next problem. But hopefully after we get these problems solved, we can power on and just push through. So anyway, let's power on and push through. This is not a show car. Well, it's been a busy morning already. Uh, when we left yesterday Arbor, I just sprayed this front support bar for the bumper. And as you can see, with a bolted on the car, it all looks really nice, a lot better than what it looked before. Uh, I've already been down to race coatings, dropped off the turbo headers and the ex uh, exhaust housing because of the turbo. So they're off getting coated as well. Um, I do need to find there's broken clip here and a couple others. So I've got to get some new clips so we can get the headlights and stuff back in. So I figure let's move down the rear end of the car and finally get the rear end in. It's sitting in the back of the Lexan at the moment. So uh, yeah, let's join those things together. It's all very exciting. This breaks. Oh, and a beefy rear end. Right, let's get this party started. So, grade eight bolts. No, I like nuts. There's still some spaces that have got to be made up for in here, but that's a later job. But yeah, in the meantime, um, I've put them on the wrong thing, aren't they? They're for the bottom. They're the bottom arms. Silly Scotty. Down here. Jack.
constantly feeling around for my nuts. It's amazing how a little bit of adjustment can uh, make a big difference to how everything sits inside the car. But yeah, all right, so that's the basics right now. Obviously, it all needs to be tightened up. And then obviously, we need to do all our hubs, need to grease all our bearings. <laughs> there is so much to do. So much to do and no time to do it. But anyway, we'll keep chipping it away at it. We'll get all this sorted and you're going to see it all on a future episode of Carnage.